The public relations arm of the Mormon Church loves to promote the image that Mormons are squeaky clean people. Think Donnie and Marie for you older folks. Never mind Marie's divorces. Or, for you younger YouTubers, the funny South Park episode titled, All About Mormons. Consistent with this image, the Mormon Church promotes the acronym CTR, which stands for Choose the Right. But do squeaky clean Mormons really choose the right? Let's see. Meet Federal Judge David G. Campbell. Judge Campbell is a squeaky clean Mormon. He's even a famous Mormon. There's a website that says so. Me? I am beat up by Mormons. My YouTube channel says so. You know I'm Mormon? No. This is my temple that you guys are doing this in front of. Now, Judge Campbell is a devout Mormon. He has at least one wife and five kids by her. He is a former bishop and has served in the Mormon Church's high-stake presidency at least twice. Me? I'm a devout Christian evangelist who specializes in Mormonism. I'm what Mormons call an anti-Mormon. Listen to the Mormon teenager shout, anti, as he throws something at us from Tyler Bingham's car. Now, I had a federal case in Judge Campbell's court against some small town cops. The cops had unlawfully seized me as a favor for their friend. They settled out of court and you can read about it here if you want. Initially, my evangelism to Mormons wasn't mentioned. But, had we gone to trial, a private letter I wrote to the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Prescott, Arizona, where I introduced myself as an evangelist to Mormons, would have come out as evidence in court. I told Mormon Judge Campbell this in court filings. I told him this because federal law says judges are supposed to disqualify themselves from trial whenever there's even the appearance of bias. It's the right thing to do so that you, the public, can have confidence in the judiciary so that you won't think a judge is biased if there's a controversial ruling. So, in this case, you are allowed to be the judge. Should Judge Campbell have recused himself in my case to avoid the appearance of bias? What do you think? But before you answer, let me tell you a few critical Mormon beliefs that you may not know about if you haven't lived in or near Utah. In addition to being called an anti-Mormon, Mormons are taught that Christian evangelists like me are paid by the devil. In fact, before the Mormon Church changed its secret temple ceremony in 1990, this doctrine was taught through actors playing Lucifer and a Protestant minister. Here's audio from the old Mormon temple ceremony. If you will preach your Orthodox religion to these people and convert them, I will pay you well. I will do my best. I hope you don't believe I'm paid by the devil. But look, Mormons really do believe that. It's quite likely that Judge Campbell does, has taught this doctrine to others, and even teaches this doctrine today. Put yourself in his head. Why would anyone try to tear down God's one true church? We must be demon-possessed. So then, an active Mormon judge, sitting on the trial of an anti-Mormon, someone paid by the devil, is like a white supremacist judge sitting on the trial of a black man who works for the Southern Poverty Law Center, or like a Nazi judge sitting on the case of a Jew. It's just not right. The other thing you need to know is that, in the Mormon temple ceremony, Mormons take an oath of allegiance to the Mormon church. Well, actually to Mormon church leadership. Their godhood depends on it. It's called the law of consecration. Here's the oath. Each of you bring your right arm to the square. You and each of you covenant and promise before God, angels, and these witnesses at this altar that you do accept the law of consecration as contained in the doctrine and covenants in that you do consecrate yourselves, your time, talents, and everything with which the Lord has blessed you, or with which he may bless you, to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, for the building up of the kingdom of God on the earth, and for the establishment of Zion. Each of you bow your head and say yes. Yes. That will do. Now, federal judges also swear an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States. But in the Mormon law of consecration, Judge Campbell has sworn an oath to build up his church, which means he must vanquish those who tear down his church, like anti-Mormons. So now he's conflicted. Which master will he serve? Do you see the problem? Do you see the appearance of bias? Well, a clerk in federal court saw it. Listen to what she candidly says when I called with some concerns about using a magistrate judge for a settlement conference. So that you know, LDS stands for Latter-day Saints, the more politically correct term for Mormons. If I had the exact same concerns of personal bias with a magistrate judge, 
judge that I've cited in my recusal motions with Judge Campbell, do my previous recusal motions persist, or would I have to file a separate recusal motion? Um, the first part of your question is, yes, you would need to refile anything, that, the motions that you have filed for Judge Campbell to recuse, which has not been granted, right. um, are for Judge Campbell. Okay. Um, I, I, know, I, mean, I understand what some of your concerns were with Judge Campbell, and that will not be a concern with any of the magistrate judges. Okay. Um, all right. Well, so you know, I mean, I know you have other concerns too, but the major one that you have had, right, right, there, right. that okay. there are none. Got it. I understand. So, <laughs> wink, wink. Okay, um, got it. <laughs> you know, I mean, there are no LDS magistrates. I got it. That way. Notice that I didn't say LDS. She did. She sees the problem. Unfortunately, despite documenting these facts with affidavits from Mormons and two motions to disqualify, Judge Campbell did not choose the right. He refused to recuse himself from the trial of an anti-Mormon. He wouldn't be the first Mormon judge to choose the wrong. In the late 70s, another federal judge, who also was a bishop in the Mormon church, refused to recuse himself in the case of Idaho v. Freeman, a case involving women and the Equal Rights Amendment. Back then, Mormon women were like the Stepford Wives, and Mormon church policy was against the ERA. Back then, as today, Mormon judges were commanded to promote official church policy. But back then, they didn't have WikiLeaks in the Internet to prove it. More recently, Mormon federal judge Ted Stewart of Utah refused to recuse himself in two cases directly involving the Mormon church, one involving a so-called anti-Mormon newspaper. He was overturned on appeal. Tell me that he wasn't biased. And Mormon federal judge Dale Kimball of Utah didn't recuse himself when the ACLU took the Mormon church to court when it bought up a public street in Salt Lake City. Even a Mormon newspaper in Provo, Utah, saw it was wrong for Mormon bishop and stake president Judge Kimball to sit on that case involving his own church. Look, Mormons in authority believe in a higher law. Like radical Muslims, they believe it's okay to lie or to break the law as long as it promotes their church, which means they often choose the wrong for the sake of their church. I hope you'll remember this and that you will choose the right this election season. If squeaky clean Mormon federal judges won't obey the law and choose the right, what makes you believe a Mormon president will?